Got out here injury free today for the most part, and uh, we'll be able to take a break and kind of restart here in the middle of May. Been a good day's work. It's 82 degrees at 12 o'clock, time and temp, brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler with Bueller. Toe 10XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Now, get ready to spend the next two hours with our three sports loving ladies. Mia O'Brien, Lauren Brooks, and Taylor Dahl. Hey, hey. This is Helmets and Heels on 1010XL. Switched on by First Coast Lighting and Fans. Upscale lighting, fans, and home decor. Show me what you got, for lady. Back in the studio today, once again, thanks to our friends at Coastal Equipment and Hidden Hills and certainly Jack O'Brien, the commissioner of the Guggen Open. It was absolutely fantastic yesterday, and we appreciate all of the clients and listeners for making the event so incredible. And we look forward already to next year's event. Well, speaking of yesterday, that's when we saw the video of Jaguars players reporting. Does it feel, you think, to them like the first day of school? I'm sure. I'm sure there's that vibe of, okay, we finally get. And some of these guys don't stop. Like the moment the season ends, they still continue working out. And they're all over the country working out with different people and trainers and friends that are also in the NFL. But at the same time, it's that for some of them, it's a fresh start. They're back. They're here in Jacksonville. New, the Jaguars that are returning are coming off a season where they collapse at the end. So they're probably ready to get going, too. When we talked to Foyer, he Talked about how heavy it was on him, and you, he's ready to get back at it. So I'm sure for them there there's this mix of excitement. I'm sure there's a little bit of nervousness of not like I'm nervous to play football, but like here we go. We can't let last year happen again. Yeah, I was always incredibly nervous for my first day of mm-hmm. school. The second day was always fine, but the yeah. first day I, I was always terrified. I mean, maybe for like the first day of middle or high school, but other than that, maybe because I'm a nerd and uh, I liked school. I liked school too, but <laughs> yeah. my problem also, was... I mean, you played... Well, so here's the thing, Lauren. Soccer is a winter sport in Florida. So with me, because soccer was a fall sport up north... I had already, like, been in the school for, like, three and a half, four weeks for preseason. All of you former and current football players can, can attest to that, too. Like, when, when you've been there since August 1, you're like, okay, like, let's get to the school part of this, uh, especially if you're not a morning person like me, and you're like, I'm over the 7 a.m. workouts. I would rather go to school for 8.30 and <laughs> practice after school. So, mm-hmm. uh, so there was a, a feeling of, like, okay, we've at least gotten through that part of the season where now we can – Go to school and then practice or have games afterwards. Mm-hmm. I just hated the syllabus. Like every single yeah, yeah. class would go over the syllabus. But what, I mean, come on, get to college and syllabus week is the best week of the year, baby. I, and I get that that's how it's supposed to be. But for some reason that always just, I was always just so nervous that like I wasn't going to be able to grasp the subjects, which is a little crazy because if you look at my GPAs throughout yeah. high school and college, uh, I, I never got a C and everything. But I was always, like I said, every year, no matter what the grade I was always so scared on the first day of school. But in watching the video on Jaguars.com with the Hunt Extras, and they do such a great job, they'll obviously be putting out the full season once uh, we get closer. But Eric Armstead, to me, was the one who kind of jumped out as he's looking around going, okay, this is my new home. How do I like the Miller Electric Center? Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to evaluate. He looked like he was a little bit, whether it's unsure or just trying to get it to know everyone. That's a good description of it, syllabus week. Because mm. that, from what I've been told, like that, that's – that's kind of what this week is. Um, you know, they obviously they, they meet as a team for the first time. Those again who participate in this voluntary portion of the spring off season program. But other than that, it's you know you weigh in, you mm-hmm. get your your measurements, you meet with your position coach. But it is very much a syllabus week right now, and I yeah. think that's important to note because on the heels of the Josh Allen press conference last week for his contract extension, and he's referring to I'll be here for a couple of weeks of OTAs to which media members or fans may say, oh, that means that he will actually be at practice when practices do become open to the media in May. Not necessarily. For players, they view the off-season program OTAs as Mm -hmm. one big thing. And so he may be there these first few weeks in which it's more of the classroom setting, more of the let's get the lay of the land, let's, you know, do all the housekeeping stuff as opposed to when they actually hit the field in May. And, hey, he may be here, but we do know that he stressed that he will be going back to Arizona. Yeah. I think it's important that he's here, Taylor, in the beginning because Ryan Nielsen is the new defensive coordinator Mm -hmm. and he needs to establish how he likes things done. And there needs to be a lot of communication 
with a new system that wasn't there before installed. And so I think it's important that he's there at the beginning. And like Mia said, if he's not there at the, the actual workouts when we get to go view the practices, okay, that we, we learned a year ago, yeah. do whatever you want, Josh. And yeah. as long as you come in in great shape, which we know he will, working hard and uh, ready to attack quarterbacks. Yeah, I think Josh clearly feels like whatever he did last season worked well for him, and it it, pl- and it panned out once he got to the season. So why change a routine that you felt like almost flipped your career in a positive way? And so, yeah, I heard uh, Tony and Mike Dempsey talking about this too, and they felt that he'll be here for this just beginning, and then he'll probably go off and do his stuff in Arizona and do his off-season routine that he did last year. Like I said, that worked. And so for him – Good for you. I know last year there were some th- there was a lot of criticism around it, but I think it was also more so it was like, okay, like you want a contract, but you don't want to be here to figure out your contract. He's got his contract now. We saw he has earned his way to his contract this last season. And so do what you need to do to come back and get another 17 and a half sacks. All right, so Doug Peterson met with the Jaguars yesterday. Here are his comments and his message to the team on day one. Thank you, Doctor. I've had a lot of time from our last game to now. Got a lot of time. A lot of time to think about the direction in which we're going. I think that's the most important thing. Is that we got to get better every single day. We can't be satisfied with just being satisfied. We can't be satisfied with just being average. We can't be satisfied with just being ordinary. No. No. We got winners in this room. We've got Super Bowl champions in this room. We've got guys that have been there and done that in this room. That's the culture we've started. That's the culture that we're going to continue to have. Every day. Every day we attack the classroom. Every day we attack the practice field. Okay? Every, every day is an opportunity to get better. Coaches and players. Coaches and players. Every single day. Okay? All right? Like I said, thanks to Jaguars.com, the Hunt Extras that is uh, available for your viewership right now on their website. And obviously there's music underneath because this is a production, uh, but we wanted you to hear Doug's comments in case you hadn't seen that video yet. And I think, Mia, the message is clear to Taylor's point earlier about the collapse last season. Doug Peterson wants them to understand that, that the back half of last season cannot happen ever again. Right. And I think he also stressed something that he talked about at the Combine, he talked about at the owners' meetings, which is – they were very intentional with who they brought in in free agency. Mm -hmm. For all those who criticized, hey, at this juncture of the development of the Jaguars under Doug Peterson, should you really be bringing in this many free agents versus having developed and drafted your own and have that conveyor belt? I feel like Doug and Trent Baalke in the front office felt like they had to go out and get guys in free agency, not because – You know, and and yes, there is truth to this, that they needed to fill some holes and they needed to fill those holes now because they want to win now, but also because they recognize that certainly drafting and developing players is critical to succeeding in this league, but so is having guys who have been there before. And unfortunately, and it goes back to once again, how many Jaguars remain on the roster from pre-2021, it is less than nine, Mm -hmm. less than nine players. I believe we're at six players You go to any other team in the National Football League, and there's a good bet that they have somewhere between three to six players left from their 2020 draft class alone, as opposed to the Jaguars, who have one. One. Actually, two. Daniel Thomas. Shout out to DT. Two. Two from the 2020 draft class. And I think that that's that's a big part of this, is that in an optimal world, you would have players from your 2019 draft class, your 2020 draft class, 2021, multiple players who had postseason experience before. So you didn't have to go out and address getting a Mitch Morse who's been to the AFC Championship game. Gabe Davis been to the AFC Championship game. Ronald Darby won a Super Bowl. Eric Armstead played in two Super Bowls. You wouldn't have to do that. But unfortunately, because of what was inherited, you did have to go out and address that because when the going got tough last year, mm-hmm. you didn't have – those experienced guys to steer the ship. It's funny because I was trying to figure out, other than Ronald Darby, is there anyone else? In I thought the same is thing. A Super Bowl I, I, I was like trying to do that in my head. I'm like, oh. that's exactly There's what I was that, thinking when I watched it. Well, when you look at, I, yeah, not Super Bowl champ, but obviously when D- Gabe Davis and Mitch Morse both have been on AFC play, championship AFC game, champ, yeah, playoff teams, playoff teams, and so they've gone at least deep and they've had experience of 
throughout the years with that. But yeah, when you're, I guess that's the one solo. But you still have guys with that experience. And I, I think there's also a realization for Doug and the Jaguars in general that this division is only getting better. And they realized that quickly last year. It kind of slapped them in the face of like, oh, we thought we had a couple years to ease it out and kind of figure things out, and they didn't. So now they're watching kind of this blueprint that all of the other AFC South teams are doing, and they're like, okay, well, we're going to have to bring in this combination of young guys that we can build, develop, and hopefully in a few years be able to give a reward as in a contract. But then also you do need those experience. You need the the guys that know how to handle it once you get to that eight and three, don't settle, don't get comfortable, move on. You've got to win every game. And we heard Doug say it a lot of, you know, no game is more important than any other game. But there's certain scenarios where late in the what felt like late last season that you wanted it to almost like you wish they were playing like it meant more because it just didn't feel that way. So I think there's just this whole realization of you can't be stagnant. You've got to keep moving forward or things are going to collapse. Eight and three, not good enough. <laughs> yeah. Eight and four, not good enough. Eight and five, oh, we've, we've got time. It's okay. No, not good enough. Yeah. And my thing is you can contribute a lot of that or attribute a lot of that last season to the fact that Trevor Lawrence was injured and he wasn't able to practice, right? Like we all know that he wasn't himself and therefore he wasn't able to go execute practices like he had been the previous seasons. But that doesn't explain a collapse on the defensive front. Yeah. That to me, when we talk about the biggest storylines to watch moving forward from this offseason into next season, to me it's the the changes that mm-hmm. have happened. The change of defensive coordinator is massive because your defense – didn't suffer from those incredible injuries like the offense did, the drastic injuries. Tyson Campbell, yes, was injured. I, who else that was a starter at the beginning of the season? I mean, Devon Hamilton wasn't time. fully healthy. Right, yeah. but by the end of the season, at least the back half of the season, he was better, certainly on the field, than he wasn't. But, yeah, you're right, that's another one with an illness, not really injury, but, yeah. And so that's where it's like your defense mm. was – was should have been there to be able to lift up your offense. And I, I realize we had a false sense of the defense because of all the takeaways in the first half of the season. I almost feel like they were gassed late because they did have to help the offense so much early. And there were several games that the Jags wouldn't have won if it wasn't for the defense early in the year. And that's what we talk about Trevor and how we got hurt late. He, It's not like the offense was playing outstanding in the beginning of the year. They got a whole lot of help defensively. And then the second half, the defense couldn't give them that. And in addition to everything piling up, it just fell apart. So I think that when we look at it, you just want to feel like you have a team. When you watch other, when you watch the Chiefs, when you watch even the Bills last year, and we'll see how that kind of goes on this year with all of the pieces that they've gotten rid of. But it, you would watch a complete game and be like, these guys can play four quarters of football and look like the same team. The Jags did not feel like that at one point last year. Every quarter, I felt like I was watching a different football team. I would counter that with the Chiefs. With and and we saw scoring was down across the board mm-hmm. in the National Football League last year. So I think that's important to note. I, I go to the Chiefs win over the Dolphins in Germany. They were down 14 nothing at half. Mm-hmm. And then they came back to win 21-14, which is easy to say when you have Patrick Mahomes, when you have Travis yeah. Kelsey. But their defense kept them in that game because their defense knew who they were. And we've talked so much this offseason, whether it's on helmets and heels, primetime, frangie show, like go down the list of 1010XL programs. We've talked so much about identity. If you had told me, in 2020, when the Chiefs won their first Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes at the helm, if you had told me that the Chiefs' defense would have more of an identity come 2023, 2024, when they won their third Super Bowl in five years, I probably wouldn't have believed you because that team was so built around the offense, the explosive play of Tyreek Hill, of uh, you know the the master, the, the the wizard that is Patrick Mahomes, his ability to escape the pocket. Um, and that was before they even invested in the run game with Clyde Edwards-Alera, first-round pick, Isaiah Pacheco able to pop as a seventh-round pick. That was pre that, too. But I think it was so focused on the offense. What they were able to build over the last four years I think is so critical and should be a blueprint. As much as we talk about the Chiefs and the Bills as a blueprint for the offense that you need to be bringing in young young guys, onboarding them, bringing them along so they can slot in down the road for those free agent fixes that you brought in to elevate the play of your young quarterback. I think we also need to be looking at those defenses and how they developed an identity because when the going gets tough, if you can have your defense keep you in the ball game, then that's going to give Trevor Lawrence enough room. That's going to give the offense enough leeway to say we need to take some chances because it's a 14-all game in the fourth quarter against the Texans, and we need to go downfield, but we also need to know that the defense has our back if a deep shot isn't going to come through. 
Yeah. I, and I agree. I mean, I think that defense is – you definitely still have to have one that's going to come in and help. And I think what happened with Kansas City is Kansas City realized that Patrick Mahomes can – do whatever he wants, pretty much. I mean, you you have a quarterback that's completing high 60s, 75% of his passes in every single game. And, yes, he has Travis Kelsey. But beyond that, there was a whole lot of question marks last year. So what they realized is, hey, let's – in the beginning, Patrick Mahomes got to sit and learn the NFL a little bit. Then he came in and they gave him the weapons that he needed. And then they figured out that he doesn't need and he can elevate all of his players. So their blueprint looks a little bit different. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence has not played like Patrick Mahomes, so you do have to give him the things he needs. He needs that protection. He needs people to throw to right now. Once you get to the level where that comfortability raises, then I feel like you can start being like, okay, now we can. We know that he'll be able to turn whatever weapons he needs to into ones that can work in the NFL, and then we have these defenses that help. But I think it is a good balance, and that's why we always talk about how important both lines are, offensive line and defensive line. And a fact check, thank you to one of our Heligans, uh, I think we've decided on Heeligans, at least yeah, for now. For sure. Um, one of our Heeligans on the heels of the ghoul, the Guggen, ha ha ha, uh, in Alabama. Thank you for the fact check. The Chiefs were up twenty-one nothing, but they held on twenty-one fourteen, which only emphasizes my point even more. The going got tough. Mm-hmm. Your offense got stuck in the mud in the second half across the pond in Germany, and your defense held firm. This defense couldn't stop a nosebleed in the month of December. Mm-hmm. And so we saw it against the Bengals, which was the omen of all omens, in which the Jags were moving up and down the field pretty much at will in that fir- in the first three quarters of mm-hmm. that Monday night football game. But when the defense was then allowing the Bengals to do the same, that's where you found yourselves in trouble, and that's where this idea of going blow for blow, like, yes, you have the offense to do that until Trevor Lawrence gets hurt, until Christian Kirk gets hurt. Zay Jones was on one leg the whole season. I know we want to segue to some basketball talk, and uh, what better way to do so, Lauren and Taylor, than with a quick that. That just happened. Brought to you by Florida Home AC, the official air conditioning partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. We are going to lean on RJ a little bit later in the 12 o'clock hour to break down the NBA playoffs and the play-in tournament, which kicks off tonight. But first, this was a guy who got me truly into the modern NBA, and he has now announced... His retirement. Six-time All-Star Blake Griffin announced on Instagram about 10 minutes ago, the former number one overall pick in 2009, 2011 Rookie of the Year Award, has announced he has played his final season with the Boston Celtics. Blake Griffin. What a career. Blake of the Year. Blake. I said it. But yes, I, I, time, Blake, I did get a chance when I was living in L.A. back in 2014 when he and CP3 and like the whole crew when the Clippers were clicking and unfortunately Kobe was recovering from the Achilles tear. And so like Clippers tickets were like that was the thing people wanted to go see was the Clippers. I went to three different games. They were so fun. So I just wanted to shout out Blake Griffin. <laughs> You've had a lot of retirement uh, in the last two days. Yeah, I feel old. Yeah, with the Yankees broadcaster John Sterling as well. But one quick thing back to the Chiefs. I think the massive difference between the Jaguars and the Chiefs and certainly Mahomes v. Lawrence is is a big conversation. But to me, the the bigger part is the Chiefs draft really well. Yeah. So when a guy like Tyreek Hill leaves, they can move along and they don't have to still go spend that giant money in free agency to bring bring receivers in or bring – defensive pieces in because they've drafted really well. Mm -hmm. And if you look at their 2019 Super Bowl winning roster and you compare it to now, yeah, there's a lot of changes. There's only a few guys like Kelsey Mahomes, Mm Nadi, and Chris Jones that are still there, but it's because they've drafted the pieces, whether it's those corners or the other receivers, running backs, they've drafted really well. And that, to me, is the stark contrast between what's happening in Kansas City and what's happening in Jacksonville. And then, yes, the quarterback – and him elevating everyone around him, that is the next step. But if you don't draft well and you rely on free agency solely, it's really hard to win Super Bowls. We saw the Rams do it once. Yeah. But that was, I feel like, uh, once in a blue moon. All right, so, yes, we will get it to some basketball. Uh, Caitlin Clark last night, no surprise, drafted number one overall in the WNBA by the Indiana Fever. Mia, when the conversation turns to Caitlin Clark, I saw Scott Carter, who covers uh, Florida football, tweet this out. My daughter asked me if Caitlin Clark is the most famous athlete in all of women's sports. And I said, no, but she's one of them. And obviously when you're, I don't know how old his daughter is, he didn't say, but I'm going to guess she's under the age of 12, 15, somewhere in there. So Serena Williams, she may not have lived through, or probably didn't live through, right? Right. And and all the other ones, Mia Hamm Mm -hmm. and, and Flojo and all those, those are the other ones he mentioned. But I think, yes, if you are a certain age and under, 
Caitlin Clark is by far the most famous, certainly women's basketball player. You could make the argument, take minus college football, take college football out of it. She's undoubtedly the most famous college athlete, or now former college athlete, but over the last two years, you could easily make that argument. I already got an email from Bet Online AG saying that a lot of money came in on the desert overnight for her to be the MVP oh my in her first year of the WNBA. I think that's, <laughs> that's a little excessive. That's a bit of a stretch. That's a little excessive. Rookie of the year, maybe we start there. Yeah, um, I think Caleb, I'll give you Caleb Williams yeah, because of the that. fact that he won a Heisman. Right, came that's back. why I said take football out of it. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, take football out of it. She's the most famous, co- she was the most famous college athlete mm-hmm. in America the last year and a half. I, I don't I don't think there is an argument for anyone else. And you can come at me with the, the Angel Reese's and mm-hmm. the Paige Becker. Sure, all great players, but unfortunately, if you went up to some rando on the street who hasn't watched a lick of women's college basketball and maybe just, you know, listens to pop culture, the name Caitlin Clark is now in pop culture. Like, it's that simple. And so that's where and we really didn't get a chance to really dive into it. I guess we did, but not really the other week. Like, that's where, for me, the Diana Taurasi pushback is just so fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. Like, first of all, Diana, you're going to have to play on the Olympic team with her this summer, so have fun <laughs> with that. Um, that You're making all these comments, and now you're going to have to play with her. And I get it's, you know, tough love and whatever. But Will Caitlin start, you think? No. Or will Diana, yeah. Diana will start. And, that, yeah. and Caitlin knows that, and I thought Caitlin's comments even last night about going to the Indiana Fever, who, mind you, sold out Gamebridge Fieldhouse for the draft pep rally. Again, women's basketball – sold out an NBA arena for a draft party in which Caitlin's not even there, and the current players are running around in Caitlin Clark jerseys. That's all you need to know as far as that goes. But for women who have fought for so long to try to get notoriety to the league, you literally just got the golden ticket. The golden ticket has Mm -hmm. been given to you. She is going to draw eyeballs. Last night, if you looked on StubHub, if you looked on Ticketmaster, for her first six games, you can't get into the building for less than two hundred dollars. Yeah, I saw tickets going for like five and six hundred dollars. That is absurd. Yeah, like for one, yeah, just pl- wait until the seventh game. Right. Yeah, for, for, it'll be thirty dollars. Right. And again, yeah. and maybe she has rookie growing pains, and maybe that drops it, or yeah. maybe she's dropping thirty a game. I don't know. But that's where like it's so fascinating this pushback because you literally were given a golden like this is the golden ticket, mm-hmm. and I understand maybe it's not you, and you feel like. You fought for this. You should be the one that should, you know, be considered the most famous women's athlete, famous women's basketball player. But at the same time, like, that's why I appreciate Sue Bird's comments. And maybe it's because Sue's retired. Sue's not going to be playing against Yeah, the Caitlin competition. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But it is so – is it not fascinating? And I know Ryan Rossillo tweeted it. He's like, the biggest difference between the NBA and the WNBA – and I'm sure there's plenty of LeBron truthers out there that would disagree with this when he first came into the league, is that he said he's never seen a young, heralded player come into the league and receive more pushback from the veterans Mm -hmm. in the NBA. It is odd. It's a weird thing, especially with the way that you have been complaining about how WNBA doesn't get recognition and doesn't get all of these things. And then, like you said, you have the opportunity to build off of this and you're shooting it down. Have you all ever been around a catty woman? Right. Yeah. That's no, what that's what is. Is. Right. right. It's right. jealousy, but it's just... Yeah. It, I, I've been around plenty. I yeah. understand. Right. I mean, I don't know that I would have ever gone public with some, some of the things that they've said. I would be like, we're excited to welcome her. And I can't wait to see how she does in this league. That's how I would have said it. And then secretly I would have been like, I'm not letting her shoot a single three for the first half, right? Like that would have been my, I'm more of a defensive player. That would have been my mindset. I would never have been. Right. I'm going to take, I'm going to let my play do the talking on the court. That's how I would have. And I'll, I'll, you know, be physical with her, make it uncomfortable. Like not, especially when you're supposed to be one of the spokespeople, you know? Um, And certainly some of those current WNBA players were at the WNBA draft last night. Um, One who was there was Aaliyah Boston, who will Mm -hmm. be Caitlin's teammate, who, round of applause for Aaliyah, RJ. Like, she is just such an ascending star in media, on the court, just seems like such a good teammate. And credit to Caitlin, because clearly Caitlin was prepared for this. And I think you saw this with Victor Wembanyama, RJ, uh, you know, remind me of this. I feel like you saw this with his NBA draft, too, where everyone knows that they are the ticket. Caitlin, Wemby, like, they are the ticket. However, they deflected 
all of the praise to the team around them. And obviously, uh, you know, Caitlin's entering a little bit different of a situation than Wemby did with the Spurs, who, mm. you know, obviously only won a handful of games coming out of the gate um, in his first season, or at the very least the first half of the season. And it, the expectation is the Indiana Fever will be better now with back-to-back number one overall picks. Um, but like the Jags. I was just yeah. going to say, Lauren, I think that that's a conversation worth having. Yeah. Uh, that when you have the number one back-to-back overall picks, and we're going to study them for science, like somebody from PFF said last week. Mm-hmm. I think you could look at this organization as well um, because Caitlin would be the Trevor Lawrence, mm-hmm. Trayvon, the Aaliyah Ball, however you want to put it. Anyways, point is, the point is, is that she consistently said, like, my job will be easy because I have Aaliyah because I have Erica Wheeler. Like, I just dish the ball inside to them and, like, I can focus on that. It doesn't have to be about me shooting the three. She didn't mention the word three-point shot once because I was paying attention all last night during the coverage from 7, 7 p.m. to 9.45 p.m. She didn't mention the three-point shooting once. It was all about, I'm going to have the opportunity because of Aaliyah. It's going to make my life easy, my transition easy. And so credit to her because she hit all the right notes. Just Mm -hmm. like I said, I think Wemby did too with deferring all of his praise to uh, to Greg Popovich when he was drafted. And, you know, it's just fascinating to see that, like, she's playing all the right notes. Mm -hmm. And yet there was the pushback, so. There will always be pushback. I can guarantee you that when there's somebody who people – think they got something that I didn't get, and Mm -hmm. that's how I think they feel. All right, let's head out to Austin, Texas. We'll check in with Tyler Feldman and talk about the Longhorns draft prospects when we return right here on Helmets and Heels on 10 X on any 2.5 FM. Murray with time. Hey, this is Aaron Murray, quarterback for the University of Georgia Bulldogs on 1010 XL 92.5 FM Sports Radio. Yes, he did. When it comes to towing products, your safety on the road is the priority at Cannons of Jacksonville. Whether it's a heavy-duty tow hitch, trailer frame, wiring, gooseneck, tow bar, or any other towing accessory, Cannons has decades of experience to ensure your towing setup is installed with precision and reliability. Visit CannonsofJax.com to explore a range of products and schedule your installation. Cannons of Jacksonville, your trusted partner for a smoother tow. Mia here, and we've all been there before. A weekend trip to the casino canceled because real life came calling my bookies new and improved online casino is here to change the game dive into a truly realistic casino experience featuring the latest in slots progressive jackpots and live dealer action all from the comfort of your own home the live casino is so easy to use folks just go to my bookie and click live casino at the top you'll find live dealers ready to deal or spin just like you're at the casino the my bookie casino provides a las vegas experience with the action in your hands and yes the rumors are true you don't even need to wear pants. Start at MyBookie today with a generous sign-up bonus using promo code 1010XL and a revamped loyalty program ensuring a host of exclusive VIP perks. Sign up and hit the casino with promo code 1010XL. The more you play, the more you win, only with MyBookie. Bold City Heating and Air is truly a family-owned and operated local company and treats all customers like family. Don't be fooled by the out-of-towners, equity firms, and national corporations that use local names. There's one name you can trust when it comes to your home's AC cooling system. Bold City Heating and Air. Jacksonville grown and entirely loyal to this community. Don't wait until it's too late. Schedule your summer maintenance now by visiting BoldCityAC.com. Imagine a complete one-stop shop for all your company's technology needs. A Jacksonville business who keeps their customer service local so you never get outsourced to a distant call center. When your company is ready for faster support for managed IT services, voice over IP phone systems, or access control, discover why so many business owners select Total Business Systems. Call 604-6900, 604-6900, or jacksitexperts.com. Cooking with Prisco. These things are wonderful. You're going to love it. Have a rolly. Oh. <laughs> Catch CBS Sports Senior NFL writer Pete Prisco every Friday afternoon on The Franchi Show. Brought to you by Showtime Sports Cards and Collectibles on 1010XL. It's Kubota Orange Days, your golden chance to score a deal that will make your neighbors green with envy. Shop the year's best selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA, and get the year's best deals. 
like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off L3302 tractors. Coastal Equipment on New Kings Road and in McClenny. Coastal Equipment. Looking for a great place to enjoy some craft creations and soak up some scenery? Bernadina's Mocama Beer Company is a must-see and must-try. Nassau County knows it. Visitors need to find out about it. Mocama means near the big water where the sun is born. And if you visit their tap room in Bernadina Beach, you'll see how they've mastered equal parts precision and art in creating great flavors from IPAs to Pilsners, lagers, and sours, plus plenty more. Mocama.com, Mocama Beer Company. Start an adventure and find them in Fernandina. This is Ace Carline for QC Kinetics. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics, the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. If you're tired of achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics now. They've got two great locations. Call for a free consultation at 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. And go see them, Mandarin and Ponte Vedra. You can get in. They've got availability. You need to give them a call. Stop dealing with pain in your hips and your shoulders and your knees. Steroids, surgery, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results. Give QC Kinetics a call today. Again, 904-274-5522. Go see them in Mandarin and Ponte Vedra. That's QC Kinetics. Ryan and Angela Wall here with Window World. You've heard us talk about it. Window World, the number one window replacement company in the USA, selling over 1 million windows each year for the past eight years. That's a lot of satisfied customers and why J.D. Powers has awarded Window World best in customer satisfaction three out of four years. Window World stands behind their slogan, simply the best for less. With Window World, you get top quality windows at a price that leaves more of your money in your bank account, and you get the absolute best guarantee there is in the window replacement industry. When compared to our competition, there is none. See for yourself. Call the competition. Get quotes from them. But before you buy, get Window World's free estimate and compare the quality of the windows and the price. You'll see. And when your new Window World windows are installed and they're saving you money on your energy bills, if anything goes wrong with those windows, Window World and I will be there to make it right. That's my guarantee. Call Window World today. Start saving money on your new windows and your energy bills and take vacation with your savings. Window World, online at windowworldneflorida.com. Window, Window World, World, simply, simply the, the best, best for less. less. Thank you for your business. Window World also offers energy-efficient doors and siding. 1010. XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. This is Helmets and Heels. Kept classy by First Coast Lighting and Fans. Upscale lighting, fans, and home decor. On 1010 XL. Okay, Motion City soundtrack. No, this is Taking Back Sunday. Taking Back Sunday. Mm-hmm. I was going back into my like mid two thousands like archive. Same like era. It's same era, yeah. and I was like, okay, it's, it's one or the other. Tyler Feldman joining us now on the All Pro Roofing Hotline. Tyler Feldman, did you know that this was Taking Back Sunday? Yeah, I'm the wrong guy to ask. <laughs> I was not prepared for Taking Back Sunday. But it, it sounds like a total jam, lady. It yeah. It totally does. I mean, you're a man of many talents, so I didn't know if music was a. Was Look, a I'm, not, I'm not going to lie about my knowledge of whatever song that was. It, it was a great song. It was a great lead. <laughs> there we go. There we go. What better way to kick off our little mini series we're doing this week on Helmets and Heels in which we further examine the prospects that could be there for the Jaguars at number 17 overall with the reporters who know them best. Tyler Joy. Joining us again from Austin, Texas, where he is one of the weekend sports anchors at KVUE in ATX. Tyler, with A.D. Mitchell in particular, let's start with him because that's when I reached okay. out to you about players that may be there at 17. We'll get to Byron Murphy and, of course, the, the latest with Tavondre Sweat as well. But A.D. Mitchell is a name that I think has kind of entered the fray late when it comes to Jaguar fans wish list. Brian Thomas Jr. of LSU has been the name that has been linked most to the Jaguars at 17 if they were to stay put, I think just by virtue of where he could fall following the big three at the wide receiver position going in some order in the top 10. But when you look at AD's game from when he was at Georgia to where he finished at Texas, and then you look at some of these other wide receivers, what stands out most about him that could catapult him into the mid first round? Yeah, I love 
Adonai Mitchell's game. He actually prefers to go by Adonai as opposed to AD. That's something that I learned this past year. So if he goes to Jacksonville, you'll have a leg up on how he prefers his first name fully to be called. My one word for him is maybe two words, however you figure out the hyphen. He's just a playmaker. The reason Sark brought him in from Alabama, and he told us this, was he wanted a guy who could win the 50-50 balls. And throughout the course of this past season, he had 11 touchdowns, uh, which was the highest mark on the team uh, from a receiving perspective. But the guy just always seemed to find a way to catch the football, which you, you can kind of teach, but there's also a feel to it too, right? And I actually talked to some media buddies up in Buffalo inquiring about Adonai Mitchell, and he's got all the – he's got above average speed, so he could be a deep ball threat. He, he's got the, you know – quickness so he could be a slant guy too over the middle I I guess my one concern for Adonai Mitchell is he does have a tendency or he did have a tendency this past season to be hot and cold like when the ball's going his way great but if it's not like where is and maybe that's just a part of the offense of Texas maybe that's just the position the wide receiver position but I think if he finds a way to be more consistently impactful on the offensive side of the ball he is a surefire. I think he's a guy who maybe he, he is that fourth best wide receiver on draft board. But I actually think he could have a better NFL career than some of those guys listed ahead of him right now. Taylor, how did Adonai get from Athens to Austin? How did Steve, Gar- Steve, Steve Sarkeesian get him away from Kirby Smart in a national championship winning program? So Adonai Mitchell has a young child. Um, he's a Texas guy. And so I think in the back of his head, he wanted to – hey, let's come home. Let's let's figure out a way to get closer to family. And I think Texas was just the perfect fit. Steve Sarkeesian started to find his stride, and it just started to really work out. Um, and it, it really was a perfect marriage. I think the reason we're talking about Adonai Mitchell right now is because he made that decision to transfer from Georgia to Texas, and he had the season he did uh, for the long haul. Yeah, I mean, I think that that transfer is probably one of the best things he could have done for his career, especially moving forward. What did you see with Mitchell and his abilities that kind of just took that next step in Texas? Because you really saw him find his place there this last season. It was the confidence for me. I feel like Quinn Ewers, as he was, as he's been going through the roller coaster of being a highly touted quarterback, and then maybe not performing the way that people expected off the bat being patient with them. Ad and I came in with this national championship experience, with this top-tier program experience, and knowing how a program that wins football games and wins national titles gets it done, he brought that energy to Texas, part of Steve Sarkeesian finding his stride and getting back to where he wants to be as a head coach. And it just worked out offensively. Sark's a big offensive mind. You have an experienced receiver like Adonai Mitchell, you pair him with a guy like Xavier Worthy, you give Quinn Ewers options, and Adonai Mitchell made the most of his ability. He's just a guy who I think puts out confidence for everyone else around him. At least for me watching, it's just like this is a guy who's confident, knows what he's capable of, and catches the football. You know, at the end of the day, at the wide receiver position, you can have blazing fast speed, you can block really well, you can have breakaway downfield speed. But if you can't catch the football, then what's the point? Yeah, that's um, so I think with that and I, Mitchell, it's like the guy can catch the football and knows how to win those 50-50 balls. That is pretty important. <laughs> Let's get the football in your hands. Our YouTube chat line is uh, lighting up right now, Tyler Feldman, as he joins us on the All-Pro Roofing Hotline from Austin, Texas. Uh, quick to note from Robert that – A.D. Mitchell mossed Christian Gonzalez when he played for Georgia. He whooped on Terry and Arnold. But let's take this Adonai Mitchell talk and transfer it to the other wide receiver who is considered a first, second-round fringe prospect in Xavier Worthy. In terms of reliability at the catch point, which we were just talking about with Adonai Mitchell, but also that speed that obviously blew everyone away at the combine, the all-time record, what do you make of both of those players comparatively their NFL futures? Well, I mean, you have to look at their size and stature first, right? AD's listed at 6'2", 205 pounds. X is listed at 5'11", 165 pounds. Like, if you three ladies walked up to Xavier Worthy, <laughs> I think you'd be shocked at how this guy ran a 4 one 
Um, he'll tell you he knew he was going to run a 4-2-1. He knew he was going to run that fast. I think that's the big question mark for me with Xavier Worthy. Beyond talented, his speed will make any NFL offense more dangerous. But you have to put into the equation – that guy, that size, playing at the NFL level, he's got to get bigger. But he's got to maintain his speed, but he's got to get bigger and stronger to, I think, absorb some of the bigger hits that he'll experience at the NFL level. My big thing with Xavier Worthy is he had some ankle issues. He had some – he had like a under-the-radar, no one really knew about this, like broken hand type issue toward the end of last season. Uh, it's can he stay healthy? Uh, I think he has all the weapons. He was re- he returned punts for Texas. So he's definitely a an X factor, a playmaker, super fast, talented. But can he stay healthy at, at that size is my big question mark with Xavier Worthy. He's got everything else there. He can catch the football just fine. Um, he's got blazing speed, obviously, as all football fans saw during the NFL Combine. Let's get to the defensive tackles. We'll start with Brian Murphy the second. We know that he doesn't have ideal length, so to speak, uh, but he's got some quick twitch muscles, right? Yeah, my one word for him is disruptor. Uh, I, I love talking with Byron Murphy. Uh, he's just a nice guy. Like he's very, he's a little bit quiet actually, but he's just you know Big Twelve defensive line of the year. Like you said, not the biggest, but he is super strong. And, and when you have that strength with that size at that interior position. It's actually the perfect combo that allows him to be why he's graded so highly right now going into the NFL draft because he's so athletic. Like, typically you've got bigger guys at that position. They can't move as smoothly or they can't squeeze into places uh, to either rush the passer or stop the run. But he's got the size, enough size, with the strength to be super athletic, more athletic than most, and then that strength and speed lends to so much success all three down, both with the pass rush and rush, rushing the passer. I actually, uh, we spoke with uh, ESPN draft analyst Matt Miller back in late February. We asked him about Murphy, and uh, Miller told us, quote, his quickness and his raw strength are just jaw-droppingly good. Um, and Sark always told us that Murphy's kind of built like a pit bull. So, um he had a play against Wyoming this past season uh, early on in the non-conference, a uh, big boy touchdown. And I think that kind of just set the stage for the season that he ended up having. Um, and I think maybe the coolest story with him is day before the Big 12 championship, uh, his uncle passed away and he was pretty emotional. He, I mean, it, these are human beings, right? We talk about them. Well, he's got all this side, this strength, but uh, – he, he was uh, open enough after uh, winning the Big 12 championship over Oklahoma State to say that last night my uncle passed and I I'm played this game and won this game for him. So um, just a good little human interest to uh, Byron Murphy that I think elevates him as you know more than just a football player. I love that, and I love the big boy touchdowns, Tyler. When you look, let's look for a second back because when you look at his freshman and sophomore year, uh, he started. I mean, he played in almost every game, but wasn't starting there. And then you see him leap to this year, being the Big Twelve Defensive Lineman of the Year. What happened between those three seasons in Texas in general, but also for him to where he really kind of solidified that spot on the line for himself? Yeah, that's a great question. You have to understand, two years ago, twenty twenty two, Texas shockingly had zero players drafted uh, i'd have to look up how often or how how many times that has happened but what steve sarkeesian has been able to do with the program in his three going on four years uh, on the 40 acres has been pretty impressive i don't know if everyone thought that he'd be able to create this type of program after everything that he had been through both on and off the field but i think you have to remember with a school like texas in a state like Texas, where I'll tell you right now, I've covered enough high school football from upstate New York to North Carolina to now Austin, Texas. High school football is different here in this state. And when you're recruiting a number of high-level prospects to stay in the state to play college football, it's understandable that Byron Murphy as an underclassman wasn't seen as much playing time. Well, because the guys in front of him were bigger and better. I mean, that's just the reality. So 
we live in this era where, hey, if I'm not playing and I'm this this year and I have this many years of eligibility left, I need to go to the transfer portal. I need to go where I'm playing. Well, Byron didn't do that. And I think it worked out just fine for him. And it showed that, hey, I can fight for my position, make the most of the opportunity when it's there, and then take advantage of it. As if right on cue, Daniel Jeremiah of the NFL Network tweeted out about an hour ago, Tyler, two stocks I'd like to buy a little over a week away from the draft. Graham Barton of Duke, Byron Murphy of the University of Texas. I think the former may behoove your hometown Pittsburgh Steelers, but perhaps Byron Murphy <laughs> could be the pick here in Jacksonville. Hey, Tyler, before Steelers, we go. Oh, Steelers, Steelers need a lot of help. They need a lot of help. We know they need a center. Perhaps it's Graham Barton. Before we let you go, brother man, uh, I, do, I don't want to end on a, on a sour note, but obviously the news of Tavondre Sweat being charged with a DWI last week kind of shocked a lot of people three weeks out from the NFL draft. What is the latest on that situation in Austin? Yeah, I truthfully, I was at the gym on a Sunday. I had an off day, and me, you know this, but, like, I saw this. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm trying to, like, just have one day here. Um, but reached out to our investigative reporter, and he got me in touch with all the right people. But I don't think this will have a huge impact. On to, I don't think anything's going to happen. Or, like, going through the affidavit and all this stuff, like, it seems like it's just going to pass. They have a date set, but for this kind of DWI situation, I, I, I think there's going to be a lot of pieces at place and people making sure Tavondre is on the right path. Uh, obviously a critical mistake, a critical error. Um, there was actually another player still on the Texas football team involved in this. He's now off the team. Uh, mm-hmm. Sark wasn't messing around there. Uh, obviously the severity of this is big in the scheme of, hey, let's not do this while we're driving, right? Um, but I think Tavondre will tell you um, he's such a fun guy. Like, he's a guy that if he's on your team, you're going to root for him. He just has that kind of personality. A lot of guys call him the funniest, and he was so open about, like, making sure he's not seen as, like, the partier. Uh, and I thought he had done such a great job of that throughout the course of the season. I don't know the intricate details of where he was, where he was coming from, um, and why, but I do think that it could maybe impact price point of how much he ends up getting paid. I don't see this impacting where he gets drafted because he was the Outland Trophy winner, uh, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Him and Byron worked great together because when Byron was getting a lot of attention, that left Devondre Sweat open to do his thing and vice versa. Uh, the two were just kind of a great tag team on that interior defensive line for Texas. Uh, I think Devondre makes any team – significantly better uh, my one word for him is he's just a congester he, he's just a big boy six five plus 360 plus i mean that guy is ginormous but he's a he's a fun ball of energy um i, I think it's a, a big mistake but one he'll learn from quickly uh, uh, with regard to what happened last week my one word for you as your ex profile suggests is superstar my friend you can uh- <laughs> You you can find him at Tyler Feldman TV. Again, sports anchor, host, play-by-play at KVUE in Austin, covering all things Longhorns and beyond. We appreciate you hopping on the All-Pro Roofing Hotline, Tyler. Ladies, thank you so much. Uh, Until next time. Thank you. There he goes. Again, Tyler Feldman TV on X. uh, Proud Pittsburgher, but now covering all things sports in the Austin, Texas area. Interesting comments, especially regarding the the AD Mitchell Xavier Worthy breakdown that I know mm-hmm. we wanna we want to dive into a little bit on the other side of this timeout. We're also going to get back to the National Basketball Association. The play in tournament begins tonight. In case you missed it folks, the Orlando Magic are good again. Need I say more? Mm-hmm. This is Helmets and Heels. Hello, you're on the air. 1010XL has a new lineup. Launch. Here we go. Dan Hicken and Jeff Prosser. Mornings. Mike Dempsey and Fat Tony. 10 to noon. Mia O'Brien, Lauren Brooks and Taylor Dahl. Noon to two. Joe C., Matt Hayes and Leon. Two to four. Frank French and Hayes Carlisle. Four to six. And Baloo and Hacker in the evening. Flip a dial. Instant entertainment. Southeast Orthopedic Specialist is now offering ortho walk-in appointments. If you have an immediate need for orthopedic care, contact Southeast Orthopedic Specialist immediately. Avoid ERs and urgent care waiting rooms. For more information, go to se-ortho.com. Relieve pain and get back to life. Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. 
sure your roof is ready for the next Florida storm by scheduling a complimentary roof inspection with Universal Roof and Contract. And right now, get $200 off your roof repair and $500 off a roof replacement, plus no interest for one year. This offer expires April 30th and restrictions apply. Ensure peace of mind before the next storm hits with Universal Roof and Contracting. License number CCC057165, CBC1258484. Universal Roof. Hacker here, and I'm loving the doors that are now opening now that I'm down almost 50 pounds. Oh, yeah, and those results are in just seven weeks with Awaken 180 weight loss. By doors, I mean opportunities I've avoided because of my weight, like an all-day adventure to SeaWorld or spending three days at Walt Disney World. Did I gain the normal 5 to 10 pounds I would have at Disney? Of course not. In fact, I lost three pounds last week at Disney thanks to the good folks at Awaken 180. Awaken 180 travels with you and I'm eating all sorts of foods, salmon, ground beef, broccoli, cabbage, collard greens, you name it. It's not a lie when I say I'm eating to lose weight is the only way to lose weight. Do what we all did, Matt, Mike, and myself. Call Awaken 180 Weight Loss, 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800 or go on Online, awaken 180 weight loss.com it's tune-up time and florida home ac the official ac partner of the jaguars wants to partner with you for a cool summer season tune up your ac unit right now so it's running at peak performance when you need it most just call 777-4300 and order a tune-up for just 59 bucks keep your unit humming at optimal level log on to floridahomeac.com and take advantage of their savings keep cool with florida home ac that's 777-4300 Dave Binion here with my son Ammon, who is the air duct cleaning manager at Zero Res. So Ammon, you may notice a little rattle in my voice and some puffiness in my eyes. That's because allergy season is coming on. Can Zero Res help? Yes, your health has a lot to do with the air you breathe. A clean and healthy home begins with clean air. At Zero Res, we can help clean the air in your home by cleaning your air ducts, cleaning the coils in your HVAC units, and fogging the system with a powerful antimicrobial that helps kill and control the growth of microorganisms in your air. We also have options for maintaining your clean air with our excellent inline air purifier and UV lights that will help keep your system clean and healthy. At Zero Res, we are more than just air duct cleaners. We're a clean air specialist. Have Zero Res air duct specialists out and right now we'll give you $50 off your air duct cleaning and while we're at it we'll give you $50 off your dryer vent cleaning. Zero Res. Spelled forward or backwards. It's, it's the, the right, right way, way to clean. C-E-R-O-R-E-C Zero Res. The State in Sports History is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. On April 16, 1940, Cleveland Indians pitcher Bob Feller throws the first and only opening day no-hitter in MLB history. Let Hodges Mazda find the perfect Mazda SUV just for you. Lauren Brooks here. Transition from city streets to off-road trails in a newly leased 2024 Mazda CX-50 for only $316 a month or lease the stunning five-passenger 2024 Mazda CX-30 for only $298 a month. Our professional non-commissioned sales team always puts your best interests first. Plus, every vehicle purchase comes with two years free maintenance. Visit Hodges Mazda today or shop online at HodgesMazda.com for the Hodges Mazda difference. See dealer for details, lease, terms, and fees for qualified applicants expires April 30th, 2024. Electricians, innovators, and tech enthusiasts, listen up. Miller Electric is shaping the future, and we want you to be a part of it. From healthcare and data centers, corporate offices, aviation, and industrial facilities, Miller Electric is powering the most exciting projects in Jacksonville and beyond. We offer not just the job, but a thrilling career with great pay and incredible benefits. Visit us at MillerCareers.com to apply. Miller Electric, where your skills meet our vision and equal opportunity employer. Men, are you suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE? The medical providers at Prime Men's Medical Center offer breakthrough treatments that eliminate problems in the bedroom without pain or surgery. 98% of men see instant results on their first office visit. Listen to a specialist in men's health. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prime Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough medical treatments that eliminate ED and PE. Men are even lasting 90 minutes or longer 
regardless of age or medical history. But that's not all. For a limited time only, call Prime Men's Medical Center now and your initial consultation and first treatment are completely free. You'll see instant results right in the office. You'll even get a gift that enhances your performance in the bedroom. All this worth hundreds of dollars is free if you call now. 904-664-8217. 904-664-8217. That's 904-664-8217. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Helmets and Heels is switched on by First Coast Lighting and Fans. Upscale lighting, fans, and home decor on 1010XL. Thanks again to Tyler Feldman over in Austin for joining us to talk for those Longhorns draft prospects. Good stuff on Adonai Mitchell, Byron Murphy the second, Devondre Sweat, Xavier Worthy. Uh, they have more. The list goes on, uh, but that's all that we got to. A couple quick hits before we take our next time out. Anthony Richardson tweeted out, welcome to Indianapolis. Caitlin Clark might need a 1v1. Uh, but either way, just off the top of your head, who wins that 1v1 if Anthony Richardson's healthy? I mean, AR can yeah he, he can jump out of the gym he can. and he can dunk and uh it's I, but can I, he shoot the three no if it's a three-point <laughs> shooting contest Caitlin wins no, yeah. but, but if, if it's just literally one-on-one yeah. I mean I think it into Anthony the Richardson. stands look that's she, the contest she can put yeah well well said Taylor well said Taylor um yeah that's true he can shoot the three look at how he how he chucked that one of the stands um no I, I think that Caitlin has proven she she can certainly create her own shot she can put people on skates and take it to the rim, but I mean the physicality of Anthony Richardson is just. I it mean, would be fun though. It's unfair for for male counterparts. Like I think if you know you were to ask one of the like you know whether it's Reed Shepard or Antonio Reeves or one of those. I Kentucky thought you were about guys. to say RJ because you pointed RJ. That way. I was gonna I was just listing off w, uh, NBA draft picks. Taylor, 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 Taylor. Taylor. <laughs> right, like I mean I would I would take Anthony Richardson over any of them. Like it, it's yeah. that simple. Yeah, it's and that's where. That's why we have men's sports, and that's why we have women's sports. Uh, one other quick hit. Rory McIlroy told Todd Lewis of Golf Channel that live golf rumors are false. I will play the PGA Tour for the rest of my career. I have to say there are multiple people, whether it's friends, people on this radio station, who are anti-live mm -hmm. and who also believe that live is a waste of time for these golfers, the fact that they're not ever going to, again, compete in the majors because mm -hmm. of the fact that they only play the three rounds. They, it's so laid back. They can wear shorts. There's mm -hmm. no one around. There's no pressure. They're not playing against the best golfers in the world. And yet they still pick live golfers when it comes <laughs> to the tournaments. That I just well, had to say. Well, because last year won, won the Masters. So yes. and but it, that was too – so it was cl closer to time. Closer, yeah, yeah to into so the So we'll career. see, and that's why I think when we have these next ma these next majors coming up, you'll really be able to, I think, start getting an idea of, because it's not even like Rom didn't even join until like August of last year. So it's not like he had as long as gap of some of these other ones. So it, that, it'll be interesting to see this year, the next few masters and how they perform, if this was a one-off or if it really is affecting them. Yeah, and when Rom won, he was still PGA Tour. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I just, I did find it funny all right we've uh, got to take a time out but on the other side we will talk with will parkinson from turn on the jets podcast and we will also get to the nba play in tournament that starts tonight you are listening to helmets and heels on 1010 xl on 2.5 fm let's go behind the curtain at 1010 xl next time it'll be flawless it's still the flea circus it's all an illusion when we have control again. you've never had control that's the illusion 1010 xl you totally undersold it clear water John, I can't even mow my side yard. It's so soggy. Man, my builder sucks. Brent, calm down. This is a common problem in neighborhoods where houses are built too close together. You need gutters and a properly installed French drain that will soak up subsurface water. We can completely dry it up. So I can take my builder off my speed dial now, huh? Yeah, we got you, buddy. Let that builder bitterness go. Clear water irrigation and drainage too. Mia here, and we've all been there before. A weekend trip to the casino? Canceled, because real life came calling. MyBookie's new and improved online casino is here to change the game. Dive into a truly realistic casino experience featuring the latest in slots, progressive jackpots, and live dealer action, all from the comfort of your own home. The live casino is so easy to use. Just go to MyBookie and click Live Casino at the top. You'll find live dealers ready to deal or spin just like you're at the casino. 
The MyBookie Casino provides a Las Vegas experience when the action's in the palm of your hands and you don't even need to wear pants. Start at MyBookie today with a generous sign-up bonus using promo code 1010XL. A revamped loyalty program ensures a host of exclusive VIP perks. Sign up and hit the casino with promo code 1010XL. The more you play, the more you win, only with MyBookie. Hey, it's Tony from Tony D's Pizza. If you love our pizza and pasta dishes, let us cater an event for you. Family function or office parties, we can deliver you an amazing Italian meal. Remember, it's not just pizza at Tony D's. Bay Meadows in 295. Transmission troubles? I'm Robin Sidbury, owner of Action Transmission Specialist on Merrill Road. So come in and see how we can help solve your transmission troubles. We service all makes and models. Remember, get traction. Call Action at 744-0755. Home of the Jaguars, WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach, WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. Rick Ballou for Carlson Dental. You know, I've been telling you this for quite some time because it's true. I hate going to the dentist, or at least I used to hate going to the dentist. I had total anxiety, and then I tried sedation, light sedation for cleaning and deep sedation as well for cavities and root canals. Folks, it's an incredible experience. So don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Go to Carlson Dental group.com that's carlson dental group.com for all of your dental needs if you've played sports or still lead an active life chances are joint pain is nothing new this is dr george barry of barry orthopedics and we like to be your option when it comes to taking care of your body and getting back in the game from shoulders to elbows to hip and knee pain barry orthopedics can diagnose and treat a variety of injuries that are causing you pain we are Barry Orthopedics and online at barryorthopedics.com. With more than 30 years of experience, our team is here to care for your entire family. Find out more at barryorthopedics.com. That's B-A-H-R-I orthopedics.com. Bueller Air Conditioning presents Are You Cool? Today's challenger, a corporate management manager from Jacksonville, Florida. Meet Les Blankston. Yeah, hi, Bob. That is a remarkably beige suit there, Les. Tell us, why are you on the show? <laughs> well, I just replaced my old air conditioner with a new one from Bueller, and I'm just so comfortable these days. I wondered, am I cool now? Let's find out, Les. Go ahead and spin the wheel. <laughs> That's right, Les. By upgrading your old AC to a more energy-efficient model from Bueller Air Conditioning, you'll save money, save energy, and proudly show your family that you are cool. <laughs> Do you think I should get a mohawk? Uh, pace yourself, Les. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. Our slogan, Know Before You Blow, applies to more than just DUI cases. Hi, I'm attorney Lee Lockett of Lockett Law. Battery charges can result in jail time and criminal convictions, too. So know before you blow a gasket and hit a loved one or a stranger. Drug crimes like possession of marijuana and cocaine will land you in cuffs, too. So know before you blow. In a boating under the influence case, you also have the option to blow or not to blow. So know your options. Know before you blow. Go to knowbeforeyoublow.com now. Offices Jacksonville. This is Molly McDonald with your 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Local Sports Update. Brought to you by Jacksonville Hearing and Balance Institute. The Jacksonville Jaguars sign Australian tight end Patrick Murtaugh. Patrick, a former rising star in Australia rules football, will be an IPP player trying to make the 53-man roster. If not, he'll be placed on the practice squad. The Florida State men's baseball team claimed the state crown after sweeping in state rivals Miami and Florida in their series. Now the Knolls turn their attention and focus to Mercer, who they play at home tonight. Game time, 6 o'clock. Gators are all set for tonight's rematch with the Dolphins. The Gators will host JU at home in the Condren Ballpark. JU won the last matchup in a close 7-6. First pitch at 6.30. More baseball is on today as the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp opened their six-game series against the Norfolk Tides at 1-1 Financial Ballpark. It's 83 degrees at 1 o'clock. Time and temp brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler with Bueller. Ten Ten XL is presented by Farah and Farah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars, protecting you and your family. Call three nine six fifty five fifty five Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Ready? In three, two, one. The countdown to the draft is on. I hope you're ready. Who'll be off the board when the Jaguars pick? Let's find out. 
One o'clock hour is here, and uh, let's not bury the lead, ladies. Not only do we have our next guest making his maiden voyage on the 1010XL airwaves, we also have a bit of a Cortica flair. If you don't know what Cortica is, you will shortly. It's the biggest little game in the nation. Ithaca College, Cortland, one of the longest standing D3 rivalries in college sports, but we get past that. As we welcome on Will Parkinson of the Turn on the Jets podcast, one of the biggest news breakers up in the New York metropolitan area covering the Jets. Will, my friend, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we got the Cortland Ithaca stuff uh, out of the way. Um, <laughs> we are the defending national champions in Division Three and uh, have a coach ranked in the top thirty by ESPN.com of best coaches in college football. So I am. I'm riding high. And as you know, Dan McNeil is one of my uh, favorite characters in college football's history. So, listen, I, I give respect where respect is due. President Bitterbaum is a that's good a great, friend of mine. That's a great way to describe him. Yes. Uh, five, four and a half years of me playing for him was uh, exactly the way I would describe it as well. Will did indeed play for Cortland, and now he does cover the Jets, and he helps us as we count down to that all-important 17th pick that your Jacksonville Jaguars currently own. With the 10th overall pick, the New York Jets will – you can give me a player. You could give me a position. The New York Jets next week will select in the 2024 NFL Draft. Uh, it's a great question. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you kind of a political cop out answer, but I'm also gonna give you two. I'm gonna give you three names that I think are the most likely, and I think it's kind of all depends on how the board shakes out. I think anything after pick four, I think the Jets will be a candidate to move up. Um, I think they're in a somewhat similar position to the Jaguars in the sense of. They could always use more alignment, right? You could always use things around the board, but the Jets could need a pass catcher. Um, I think the roster is good enough as is to be a playoff team. I think the the thinking is, hey, if Mike Williams is who he was, has been, and stays healthy, you know, with Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall, they'll be fine. Uh, Tyler Conklin as well, right? They'll be they'll be more than fine. This is also the worst offense, or one of the worst offenses in NFL history a year ago, and. Um, I think if Roma Dunze, Malik Neighbors, or Marvin Harrison start to fall at all, um, again, is it unlikely? Probably. I don't see you know Dunze getting past probably probably nine. Um, but if one of those three guys is on the board for the Jets, you know, at pick eight with Atlanta, who's going to probably draft a defensive player no matter what, so it, you know maybe get some the draft capital there. Whether it's Tennessee, who can go more, I mean, he's probably going to go a line. I think you'll see the Jets grab one of those three receivers if they're there. I think the second most likely is probably Brock Bowers. Um, again, another weapon for this Jets offense. I think he's a little bit more of an enigma. I think he's a little bit more of kind of your choice and your flavor of what you like in a what you like in you know drafting a top ten player. And then lastly, I think Troy Fontenot uh, or Olu Fashanu, uh, you know, respective tackles um, from Washington and Penn State are, are a good good shout. The Jets are set at offensive line from starters, but all, a lot of guys have injury history. So um, I know it's probably not an exact answer, but I would say right now, if I said all around the board, I would say they'd go Rome than Bowers, than uh, one of the tackles. Now, Will, when you're talking about the, a possible trade-up, I know right now with the Jets, the Jets in a similar spot as the Bears to where they have that top, that top high pick, but then they don't have another pick until round three. So is that causing some controversy there of that possible trade-up? Yeah, I think, like, in a perfect world, I think the Jets would love to have an additional top 100 pick. Um, I, I, you know, like, they obviously this is a pick that, in a crazy way, as much as last year was a disaster with Rodgers getting hurt, you know, four plays in and the whole nine yards, this would have been a first-round pick if Rodgers would have played last year. So, um, you know, who knows where the Jets would have, how it would have gone last year. I think they would have been a playoff team, obviously. But, you know, now they have a top-10 pick and they have Rodgers coming off, you know, coming off injury. So um, I think they'd love to trade down. I just think they're in a precarious spot where, unless it's a Cincinnati, maybe it's a Jacksonville coming up for a tackle, I mean, you know, receiver or a tackler or one of these corners. Other than maybe, you know, there's three teams after the Jets that all want quarterbacks, but how much return are the Jets really going to get, you know, moving back one or two spots? Do you get an extra four? And is that the Jets already have two fours? Is that worth it? Um, that's why I think, like, they're in a bit of a spot there. But you have to remember as well, this entire Jets regime, head coach, GM, coaches, et cetera, are probably all fired if the Jets don't make the playoffs. I would say they are pretty much guaranteed to be fired if they don't make the playoffs. That said, um, you know, if you're the Jets GM, Joe Douglas, who cares about that 2025 first round pick, right? If you're not even going to be, you might not be working. I wrap the credit cards for somebody else. You know, if this thing doesn't work and if the Jets are really good and you hit and trade up, um, you know, that's a pick in the late twenties and, and you're not feeling too crappy about it. So um, I, I would agree. Yes. But I, and like they probably love to trade down. I just don't know 
you know, how much can you afford to trade down when you still do need one more, one or two more elite guys yeah. um, on this roster? Well, where are Jets fans on Aaron Rodgers? Obviously, they are hoping he's going to be healthy. Do they fully believe in him? He is getting up there in age. And also, he's so incredibly kooky, quirky. Like, where? How do they feel about him? <laughs> oh, we could do an, we could do a two hour <laughs> podcast on this this alone. That's I bad. think. Look, I think part of the the thing here is you have to think about it. Is the, all the hype from last year is almost only, only built up more now. Okay. Mm-hmm. From the aspect of look, he played four plays. Um, we have no idea how it would have gone. He played one pre two preseason series. He threw an awesome touchdown to Garrett Wilson. And that's it. And then he had really good practices. So there's not much to go off of. The Jets are coming off of three straight years of Zach Wilson, Mike White, Trevor Simeon, Chris Trevler, Tim Boyle. Um, I'm missing somebody else here. Josh Johnson. So it's like they're you know they're coming off having a starting quarterback for the last three years and majority of the year. That's one of the worst NFL draft busts we've seen in, in the 21st century. Um, so honestly, Aaron Rodgers being even like 50% Rodgers, and even if he had the year he had in 2022, I feel like it's probably worth it. Um, I think people would love to, you know, the Jets are in the headlines a lot more than they have been in recent memories because of Aaron Rodgers, obviously, in New York. So I think sometimes fans are a bit frustrated with a lot of the headlines being not about football. Um, that, that's for sure. And a little bit of the, there's a term in, in New York of like wall Jets, you know, or, you know, typical Jets. And that's kind of, you know, where a lot of these stories come from. Um, so I get that. But at the same time, I think these fans are just super excited. I think. This year, GM Aaron Rodgers is kind of taking a step to the side, and it's just quarterback Aaron Rodgers and captain of the team Aaron Rodgers, not Al Lazar, Randall Cobb type of type of move. The Jets have been pretty shrewd with Tyron Smith, Morgan Moses, Mike Williams, you know, just to just name a few. I think that's part of why there's not as much anger this year. Uh, I think during the year there was excitement he was going to come back, and the season just went so poorly that, like I said, honestly, you know, the Jets have had one. 30 touchdown passer or two 30 touchdown passes in team history. Um, Rogers has had like a bunch of 45 plus touchdown years. So I think, you know, he's 40, uh, you know, anything's better than, than watching Zach Wilson for 17 weeks. <laughs> you can find him on X at will PA 11. He is the host of the turn on the jets podcast and will Parkinson joining us on the all pro roofing hotline. Will I've seen several, Listeners of your podcast, several Jets fans on Twitter tweet the following phrase term at you. And so um, I'm just going to throw it out there in the open. What is Bauer sexual and where where did that come from? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> I, I've been trying to rack my brain around what that even means. There was, there was a term coined by uh, Ithaca legend Jake Asin earlier last year that people who were diehard Zach Wilson fans were Zach Wilson truthers. And then you had the Zach Wilson haters. Um, that was a, a fun, not so fun, maybe you want to rip my hair out type of debate for the last couple of years. This has now become the new Jets fans thing. It was Darnold versus Sam. Then it was Zach versus Zach himself. Now it's, uh, you know, ba- Brock Bowers at 10 versus not versus O-line and, uh, you know, a different receiver. Um, if you are somebody that likes Brock Bowers as a prospect, which I think anybody around the NFL does like Brock Bowers that actually has watched the tape and talked to any semblance of any coach ever that existed um and either college or the pros would say brock bowers is a really good prospect whether you want to take him or 10 or not you can just say he's a good prospect if you say anything positively about him as a jets fan you are a bower sexual and if you um you know if you think he's not good then um you know you hate him and you know you think the jets suck and the whole thing so it's a very it's a very uh unfortunate um situation because I like to try to talk about prospects in like a realistic manner of like not every, no, there's no perfect guy. And, mm-hmm. you know, you, right, like Bowers would be really good on the Chiefs or the Lions or these teams with innovative offensive coordinators. The Jets have made Hackett, and you're hoping Aaron Rodgers brings out the best in a guy if they draft Bowers. So um, I guess I'm a Bowers sexual because I wouldn't hate to pick a 10, but um, I, I still would love to know why, where, if that ends up in the dictionary one day. Uh, well, me and I have met Brock Bowers, and I'm going to say that if he gets wind of this, he does not want to play there. He will not like this uh, attached to him. He pa- <laughs> will. He panicked when I just did, like, a question of the day. It was like, 
you know, like, get rid of one of these three things, like steak, chicken, or pork, and he, like, panicked for a solid three minutes oh, no. of how he oh, would God. answer. That's too much. <laughs> right. A great great football player. There's no question. Great guy, too, but uh, I, I think he would panic if he knew that. This is not uh, so you're well. saying he's the anti-Javon Kinlaw with the media. Yeah, yeah. Um, if anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about, just Google it. I'm not going to run radio. I'm not going to go into that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so the anti-Javon Kinlaw, anti-Aaron Rodgers, basically. Uh, one more for you, Will, before we let you go. I am curious, the state of the offensive line, just because Morgan Moses, Tyron Smith, one-year deals, older, older, up there in age, that's where I can't help but question, and I understand that you know Joe Douglas and company could be gone if they don't win this year, and so you push all those chips to the middle of the table. You try to give Aaron Rodgers everything he possibly could ask for in the passing game. But doesn't that also include fortifying an offensive line that struggled so mightily last year in terms of future offensive linemen too? Yeah, one hundred percent. I think that this is this is kind of you know we mentioned Bowers in the debate there. This is one one thing where you know it's it's different um, and it's difficult to kind of talk through because last year the Jets right were in a similar mold. I think everyone thought they were going to try to win a Super Bowl. Obviously, Rogers gets hurt in the whole nine yards, and they had other issues. That said. They ended up drafting Will McDonald last year in the first round, and Will McDonald played 17% of snaps. I mean, they ended up losing Bryce Huff to free agency because of it, and uh, there's just a lot of there was a lot of frustration. Hey, we took a first round pick that barely played last year, and he's not even really guaranteed to play much this year either. Um, after getting a sound Reddick, so I think that there's a little bit of PTSD there. Um, you know, hey, would this guy even start day one? Can we afford to have a guy who's a rotational piece as a rookie? Um, but then you just have to look at, hey, Tyron Smith misses time every year. Uh, Morgan Moses, while well, he's been an Ironman in the NFL, finally missed time for the first time last year. And, you know, John Simpson's a guy who, well, I like the value of the signing, to your point, you know, a year ago with the Raiders was like kind of trending towards an XFL player um, and is now revitalized and et cetera. Joe Tim and Elijah Vera Tucker, again, really nice prospect, young player. So to your point, I think that's where the reason where offensive line makes too much sense to Troy Fontenot out of Washington if you're the Jets. Maybe it's a slight reach. You know, maybe he's the 18th best prospect, and he should really go kind of where the Jags are picking. And that term, you know, maybe it's Cincinnati. He's a guy that could probably beat out John Simpson week one. And you're saying, wow, the Jets' offensive line's got three awesome studs under the age of 25, and they've got these two veteran tackles. And Fontenelle will take over tackle next year. That's the reasoning for drafting offensive line. So, um, you know, you could kind of go back and forth of, hey, does the quarterback help mitigate pass rush, or do they need a better offensive line? Whatever is it. All I know is Aaron Rodgers, while he still has every bit of juice on his arm. The one thing I think we haven't talked a lot about, especially in New York, has not been talked about enough, not just that he had the Achilles injury, but he still moves well, right? He's not, you know, you know Brady towards the end or, or Mac Jones, no offense to, you know, the Jags in back of starting or back of quarterback, but, you know, he's not, he's not more of like what Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrow, these guys were earlier in his career where he can move around and his mobility to create things outside the pocket. That's not quite as much as what he is anymore. So, Maybe, you know, drafting offensive line is the prudent strategy, and that's what you go with and say, hey, listen, you know, figure out how to make Alan Lazard back to a 60-catch, 600-yard receiver um, instead of a guy who caught 21 balls for 200 yards last year. Like, hey, you're going to deal with Lazard, and we'll get you an extra tackle. So I think that's the, that's the reasoning and argument to go draft offensive line at 10. Well, I do want to ask you real quick before we let you go. Uh, generally, what are you? What are the vibes around the AFC East? Bills kind of cleaned house almost offensively. Obviously, still have Josh Allen, but losing Stephon Diggs and a couple offensive linemen um, and Gabe Davis to here in Jacksonville. But the Patriots, a TBD at quarterback, a new coach. Uh, the Dolphins seem like it may be the biggest competition there right now. Yeah, I, I'd honestly 100% agree. I think. Anytime you have Josh Allen, you're a threat. And, you know, they, the Bills have obviously won the AFC East, you know, a lot <laughs> in recent memory. I'm sure, you know, as Jets and Dolphins fans having to go from Brady to right to Josh Allen, obviously very different types of players. You know, just uh, your own division. Uh, I think the Bills are still the favorite just in terms of name, quarterback, and things like that. But Miami's got a really good roster, but Miami's roster is quite top heavy. They lost a lot of really valuable guys on defense. Um, you know, Tyree Kill, as amazing as he is, and I'm not slandering him in any way, has certainly started to get more and more banged up. I don't know if you guys have seen the same thing, but it feels like every week now it's an ankle and a hip and, a, and ribs. Jan Waddle seems to be the same way. He most are similar. Devon A. Chain similar. And Tua, obviously, as we know, if you get 17 out of games out of Tua again, I mean, I don't know anything about injuries because that would be quite impressive to get healthier as you get older. Um, 
So I think the Jets have the best roster on paper in the AFC East, and I think they should expect to win the East. It's just it's so much projection of what's Rodgers look like? What is Tyron Smith going to be? What is Mike Williams going to come back and be? Who are they going to draft at 10? All these different things. Um, I think the Patriots are a clear fourth. And I think the Bills are probably have the weakest of the three rosters with the best quarterback. So um, it should be a really fun battle. I think if all three teams were in the playoffs next year, I don't think anyone would be surprised. If two of them end up injuries and, and not performing expectation, I don't think anyone would be surprised either. Will, as we get ready to say goodbye on the All-Pro Roofing Hotline, let the folks at home know where they can find you. And I know you also were a part of a draft guide, I believe, with Badlands, if you're able to plug that too. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, Will PA on 11 on Twitter, Instagram, all those different things. Uh, turn on the Jets podcast or your podcast. Turn on the TOJ Talks on Saturdays on Badlands. It's myself, Connor Rogers, Joe Caparoso, um, just, and, and a bunch of other folks at the network just uh, you know, put out a – 150 prospects, even hit the 300 prospects by next week. Draft guide in depth, even if you're not a Jets fan, it's a great way to kind of get involved there. And then uh, have a, another show that actually is launching with Mike Giardi, um, you know, up in Boston, formerly NFL Network. Um, that'll be covering all 32 teams in the league. So I'll be everywhere if you want to hear my uh, voice at all. You know, <laughs> there's plenty of places to be able to find me. How fitting. We had Mike on to make the third pick in our countdown to 17, and now you make the 10th for the Jets. So it it all comes full circle. Uh, I know I did a better job than Mike. It's okay. (laughs) He knows. He knows. We'll let him know, too. He said good things about Mac Jones, though, Will. (laughs) Oh, boy. Uh, Yikes. I'm going to have to bring that one up on the next episode. Hey, as long as we get some love, nothing wrong with that. It all comes full circle. Yeah, exactly. free, free PR is not bad. Exactly. Will Parkinson, again, of the Turn on the Jets podcast. You can find him at WillPA11 on X. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, guys. And there he goes, one of the rising stars in the New York sports scene. Make sure you guys follow him. ton of great draft content as well, like he said, Jets and beyond. So Trevor Lawrence, Jaguars quarterback, is meeting with the media as we speak. And two giant takeaways for me that have come out uh, as everyone's uh, covering that everyone that covers the Jaguars is tweeting about it. Of course, the Jaguars are beat reporters that are there. Uh, A, he did not feel healthy, fully healthy until March. The Jaguars' last regular season game, and of course no postseason this past season, was January 7th against the Titans. So that's basically two months worth for him to feel healthy fully healthy Mm -hmm. that goes to show you just how ravaged his body was uh last season the other thing that he said he doesn't know if doug peterson or press taylor will call the plays this upcoming season Mm, that is the juicy one all right well look at that i will say too then like there was a point at the end of last season where i was like if you do not feel like you can play to like your highest ability then don't play and he kept forcing it like i get it trevor you're a competitor and you want to be out there but ultimately, it hurt the team, and like you've got to make that decision of let my body rest. Because imagine if he would have, maybe it would have been able to heal or not get re-injured, or certain things wouldn't have happened if he would have just sat a game. But I think that's exactly why we just talked about Mac Jones. I think that's exactly why Mac Jones is here because I think Trevor and probably nothing against CJ Beathard, but mm-hmm. I think Trevor and the office he didn't coaches, play terrible when he was in. He didn't play terrible, but he played against such a bad team in the Panthers. I think they looked around and thought that Trevor even at 70%, and I'm just throwing a percentage out there, but Trevor, even under 100% healthy, was better than the next option. And that's, to me, why I think they traded for Mac Jones, because if he does have the same, not same injury, but if he goes through a similar thing this year and he is injured, yes, we need you to sit because we need you to fully get healthy Mm -hmm. before the next game or for the next few games. And you felt more comfortable, or they feel more comfortable with a guy like Mac Jones, I believe, than a guy like C.J. Beathard. All right, when we come back, we will get it to our Heels highlights. Uh, we've got some special Saturday Night Live clips for you. And, of course, we still have the NBA to discuss. You're listening to Helmets and Heels on 10 to Next L, 92.5 FM. This hour of Helmets and Heels is brought to you by First Coast Honda Dealers. Jacksonville, first down. The official station of the Jaguars fans. 1010XL and 92.5 FM. So you want a new ride, but you've got to get payments to fit your monthly budget, right? Well, if you want low payments, then you've got to go to Arlington Toyota Pre-Owned and save today. How does this sound? Just $500 down and $288 per month gets you a pre-owned 2021 Toyota Corolla. Or you choose a pre-owned 2021 Camry, RAV4, or Tacoma for just $500 down and $388 per month. Arlington Pre-Owned will even help you with your credit. Get a fresh start with help from Arlington's friendly credit for everyone pre-approval helper. It's all about getting you approved. And remember, you can buy pre-owned with total confidence thanks to Arlington's 30-day exchange program. 
That's 30 days to love your pre-owned purchase or exchange it. But don't wait. you got to go to Arlington Pre-Owned today if you want just $500 down, low payments, 30-day exchange, and friendly credit for everyone. Shop in person, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard, and online at arlingtontoyota.com today. Attention poker enthusiasts, get ready for unbeatable action at Best Bet with locations in Jacksonville, Orange Park, and St. Augustine. On April 19th and 20th, dive into the excitement with $1,500 high hands every 30 minutes. And save the date for April 27th because it's 24 karat gold day at Best Bet Jacksonville where we're dealing out $24,000 in prizes throughout the day starting at 10 a.m. Want in on the action? Visit bestbetjacks.com for all the details. That's bestbetjacks.com. An ACL tear can be a devastating injury with prolonged pain and rehabilitation. Hi, I'm Dr. George Bari. I'm a sports medicine orthopedic surgeon who grew up right here in Jacksonville and then went on to train with the world-renowned Dr. James Andrews. At Bari Orthopedics, we use the most current techniques to get you back on the field with less pain and quicker rehabilitation. We treat all types of sports injuries with the newest techniques available. Please call us for consultation or visit bariorthopedics.com. Find out more at bariorthopedics.com. That's B-A-H-R-I orthopedics.com. Hey folks, Rick Ballou here for John's Auto. They've been a staple in Jacksonville going all the way back to 1985. At John's Auto, they service all makes, all models, cars, trucks, diesel, you name it, they do it. Whether it's routine maintenance or a complete engine overhaul, call John's Auto on Arlington Road. That's 904-743-3857 or go to johnsautomotivejacks.com. Have you been dreaming of enhancing your living space with top quality custom windows and doors? Well, now's the 30-day spring sale with Renewal by Anderson. Save $300 on every window, $825 on all patio doors. Plus, no money down, no payments, and no interest for 12 months. This offer expires April 30th and restrictions apply. Renewal by Anderson, a better way to a better window. Visit rbafla.com. License number CGC 1527613. Now those sound like some well-oiled machines. Hey, Glenn here from B&B Oil. If you have equipment that needs fuel and only want the best for your engines, we've got you covered. From fuel for boats to construction sites with large equipment, we deliver all types of fuel and lubricants. We also have tanks from 250 gallons to 2,000 gallons and larger if you need them. Give me a call and let's talk. Find us online, bb-oil.com. Florida Home AC, the official AC partner of the Jaguars, make them your AC partner with honest cost estimates before they start the work with no hidden fees. Call 777-4300 for Florida Home AC. Every weekend is a stone cold sports weekend. Hey, Dan Hicken here. Watch for the weekend with Dan on YouTube and Facebook, and I'll help you put together your sports weekend. Weekend with Dan brought to you by Stone Core. We do the outdoors better. Hey, it's Matt Hayes. 100% 100% risk-free with Awaken 180. No subscriptions, no hidden fees, just a proven plan to lose weight. I did it, Dempsey did it, and now Hackers transforming right in front of our very eyes. Results at Awaken180WeightLoss.com. This is Joe C. from XL Primetime and stoked to crank up the 9 after 5 once again at the Golf Club of Southampton. Every Wednesday, a little after 5, the gang at Southampton will be hosting us with a new game, and I'm inviting you to be a part of it. Now, through the summer stretch, break up the week with a little hump day fun every Wednesday. Call 287-PLAY to get on the tee sheet. There'll be food afterwards and prizes, including playing for a membership at the Golf Club of Southampton. Call 287-PLAY and hit the tee with Joe C. Let's go! Looking for a night of action without a big hit to your bankroll? This Saturday, April 20th at 7 o'clock in the Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena, cheer on your Sharks as they go all in against the Las Vegas Nighthawks. See what I did there? With tickets as low as $15, you can't find this kind of family affordable fun anywhere else. Call 904-621-0700 or visit jacksharks.com. Let's go! Decades night. Find that old members-only jacket or favorite flannel shirt. We're celebrating the 90s. What's your favorite decade? Let's go! Don't miss the fun this Saturday, April 20th at 7 o'clock in the Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena. For tickets, call 904-621-0700 or visit jacksharks.com. That's tickets at 904-621-0700. Let's go! Let's go! Don't 
10XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Light up your lunch with helmets and heels. Presented by First Coast Lighting and Fans on 1010XL. Every Tuesday on Helmets and Heels, we give you our heels highlights. And they sound this week like this. We all are one, two, three, two. Nico Horner drives in the game, winning run as Cubs beat Diamondbacks in extras. Nico, let's first start when you were able to drive in the winning run there. You got to a fastball that was about up here. Line drive, base hit, right field. Gritchick up with it. Only one will score, and it is 3-2. The Cubs with the lead as Nico comes through. What's the key to getting to a pitch like that? Yeah, probably not. Uh, not what we're going up there looking for, but definitely we'll take that result. <laughs> Scotty Scheffler's eagle at 13 on Saturday gives him the tie for the lead at 6 under at the Masters. Scotty Scheffler can make some noise here. This is for eagle. You want noise? You got it! Triple fist pump. Love it. Max Holloway knocks out Justin Gaethje with one second left for the BMF title at UFC 300. Holy smoke. And this was a fight where everybody thought that Max was going to be outgunned. He was not outgunned. Oh, my God. All right long. Look at this right hand that ends it. Right here. Wow. And what a result. What I mean, a result. what a result. Unbelievable. And on the With biggest night second. of the year. Look at the clock. Three. I mean, these guys are winging. Two. Boom. guys for a bit of a loop there that was I, I was like they're fully expecting me to pick baseball or golf for the WNBA draft don't worry we'll hear from that in a little bit um but no I actually made it through an entire UFC fight card um which of course Kevin is a huge UFC nut and uh and so six o'clock UFC 300 kicked off with the prelims and Usually by about midnight, I'm falling asleep on the couch. But shout out to uh, Max Blessed Holloway and company because, uh, number one, an exciting finish for the BMF title. But also, in sports, I don't think outside of a buzzer beater, we have a situation where you have a knockout with .01 seconds left on the clock like we did in the UFC out in Vegas on uh, on Saturday. And so I think as a pure sports fan, Mm -hmm. not to mention there's 10 seconds left. He's already going to win the fight by decision. And he pulls Justin Gaethje over, and he says, like, Let, let's just duke it out for 10 seconds, and he knocks him out. So. Is that where the new uh, Joe Rogan yes. Uh, yes. screenshot Yes, Sage Steele. Yes, that's Joe, <laughs> Joe Rogan, not Dana White, uh, the new <laughs> meme that uh, presumably people will be using. That is indeed where it came from. Because it was wild, because, like, you're sitting there on the couch, and you're like, okay, like, they're going to, like, you know, have a big finish. But he didn't uh-huh. expect to knock him out. I yeah. mean, defending champion, you know, he had the belt. And then, uh, nope, that, that was that. And uh, and so it was it was very epic. It was a very epic third to last. So that's the featured bout. See, I'm learning a very epic featured <laughs> bout. And uh, the the women's co-main event went a little bit longer than uh, than I would have liked. I, I thought I was fading fast. That was also around the same time Caitlin Clark appeared on SNL. And so I was like debating, like, let me pull up on a second screen right now. Um, and then, of course, the main event ended in a knockout real quick. So the featured one is usually a championship bout, right? The featured is the third from the top. So, so it's feature. I'm learning so much, by the way. So there's the curtain jerker, Lauren. Oh. That's the first match of the card of the prelims, and then we get to the main card, which is the top five fights of the night, which is the headliner, and that's where it's usually pay per view, and that's where you have the featured bout is a third to the top, the co-main event, and then the main event. So much that I, I listen. The U the UFC I MMA watched. analyst Bo Valentine has said he will pop on whenever we need to, to <laughs> break down MMA for us this summer. Oops. Maybe in the dog days of the summer. Uh, appreciate that. All right, let's move along. The Cubs win, so we had some yes. baseball. Uh, when you have your favorite players on here, Taylor, mm-hmm. it's it's been Christopher Morel. Mm-hmm. Uh, now it's Nico Horner, mm-hmm. and I feel like you have another favorite Cub. Uh, those are like my two top favorites. Okay, I. 
I like Dansby Swanson a lot. He's probably like my next. I love everybody. I was just about to go through the whole lineup. And I was like, let me just stop. Christopher Morrell and Nico Horner are my two favorite Cubs right now. The one guy that I had a couple weeks ago, uh, Michael Bush, he is new. We just got him. He was one of the Dodgers prospects. We got him in a trade last week. He just hit his uh, homer in a fifth straight game. He's been playing really, really good baseball. Um, they've been kind of mixing him around in the field, but a lot of first base there. Uh, so we'll see what happens when Pete Crow Armstrong gets called up and then Belly goes back to first. I'm not quite sure what they'll do because they're going to want him in the lineup. He's been batting really well. Um, so he, But he's new, so he's not like a favorite yet, but he's been really fun to watch um, because he's all over the place and he can just crush the ball, which has been fun. But, yeah, this play was funny because it ended up being the – it was top of the 11th, ended up being what won the game. But Nico Horner swung at a ball that was literally like above his head. And I'm like, what is he swinging at but made contact single – drives in a run and even like that's why I kind of combined the clip because she was like what you know what was going through your mind when you hit something he's like you don't hit that you're like you normally don't do that right. but it worked out so it's fine um but if you see it I I sent it to my brother who plays baseball and I was like look at him sweet who's also a pitcher and I was like look at the, him hitting this ball above his head and my brother was like yeah don't do that yeah, they definitely teach you not to do <laughs> yeah. things like that uh and I picked Scotty Scheffler with the eagle uh, because I just think Scotty Scheffler deserves even more praise with just how he's handled all the success and everything like that. But, yeah, the Eagle on 13 on Saturday and, and hearing Jim Nance, who we didn't get to hear during the Final Four, certainly Ian Eagle did a great job and uh, and had some really fantastic memories, uh, sound clips that we'll remember. But I love listening to Jim Nance, and so I had that. Brian reminded me that I could have also picked Jack Caglione's home run on Saturday that I got Another to see in one. person. <laughs> Another home run is 19 since he had his 20th on Sunday. Uh, but we, I've played Cags, I think, the last two weeks, so yeah. I decided I'll go with Scotty Scheffler. I feel like from, like, February to June, we could do a Cags every week Probably. highlight for a home run. I certainly hope so, at least. That well, means yeah, I guess depending. Could we get a pitching highlight, play. though? That's, yeah, that's what that's Florida what fans need. really need. <laughs> yeah, he's really only had one bad game. Mm -hmm. Other than that, he's he's no, he hasn't pitched perfectly by any means, but he's only really had one bad game uh, so far this season. All right, uh, you mentioned SNL, uh, Mia, and Taylor, I know you've loved SNL for a long time mm -hmm. and the skits and everything like that. So you put together a compilation. Well, of RJ did. RJ did a great yeah. job, RJ. I, I sent him a few. We kind of discussed in our group chat a few that we remember. Um, and then so I also just, in an article, people kind of ranked certain ones that they also thought was funny. And I was reading it in the office, and I was like, oh, I forgot about this one. And Mia was like, oh, yeah, that was a good one. So I threw, uh, I, gave some, I gave some to RJ to put together a little uh, a little reel of some of the, the better sports-related SNL skits. This year, Clay Caitlin Clark <laughs> broke the record for three-pointers in a single season, and I have three-pointers for Michael Che. One B, two funnier, three <laughs> dumb <laughs> Thanks for doing that, Michael. Yeah, no problem, and, and good luck in the WNBA. I hope you have a great first season. Thanks. I'm sure it will be a big first step for me. But it's just one step for the WNBA. Thanks to all the great players. And Michael, since you're such a big fan, I brought you a souvenir. It's an apron signed by me. <laughs> Seriously, I'm honored that SNL asked me to host. I was nervous about doing a monologue. But then I remembered, I'm actually, I'm pretty good with words. I'm pretty good with words. Like, during uh, games, I do these super eloquent pump-up speeches for my teammates. Please watch. More, 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 more. And sometimes I even do it in my Pat Mahomes voice. Oh, more, more, more. As you know, basketball is a pleasant diversion, but let us get back to a more serious topic. The Bears. The Bears. Now, when we were last privileged to observe the Bears, they were playing the Giants in a postseason. Final score that game was 31-3, to and I shan't say who won. Pat, what happened? I think it's pretty obvious. Coach Dicka had his mind on more important things. There was a war end, my friend. That's right. Our boys were overseas. Did you guys order the uh, nachos or the beers? The beers. The beers. The beers. The beers. The beers. Yeah. Hi, I'm Eli Manning, and I'm a proud ambassador to the Little Brothers Program. So, what does your brother do to you? He breaks my toys and doesn't let me play with my video games. Let's find a creative solution to fix that. Are you Eli Manning? Nope. I'm your worst nightmare.
Okay, we're coming to you live from beautiful Candlestick Park. The Eagles want the coin toss. It's time for kickoff here on Sunday Night Football. What's up, girls? Who wants to hit a granny slam? Don't worry, Grandma. Grandpa Rossi will take good care of you. It's your lucky night. We're about to pull a triple header. Ooh! Well done, RJ. A, a whole little trip down memory lane there. The Eli Manning was the one that I completely Eli's forgot. Me too. The times that Eli and Peyton have appeared on SNL. They're but fantastic. No, I mean, and you know, bias aside, I thought that Caitlin Clark did a pretty good job. If anything, I think they told her to go out there, and they were like, you need to be assertive. Because it came off as like she was, they were like, you need to like be the stand-up for women's sports and yeah, be yeah. mean to him. Um, because I think you even saw it last night in the WNBA draft coverage. Like, she is at her best. Not to say that O'Brien is strong in her, but it is. When she's on the desk with Ryan Ruocco and Rebecca Lobo and Andrea Carter, and she's like, I mean, it's the Midwest. I'm back in the Midwest. Like, that's much more, I think, her style as opposed to this, like, tight buttoned up, like, you know, I'm going to list off all the WNBA greats. But, hey, it was good and it was, you know, very, very newsworthy. Credit to SNL for reaching, yeah. you know, reaching out to a sport that I couldn't tell you if any WNBA players have ever appeared on. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I know Ronda Rousey was on SNL, and she was one of the first female athletes to host, so I don't think there have been very many. All right, as promised, we will talk NBA when we return right here on Helmets and Heels on 10 Snicks on any 2.5 FM. This hour of Helmets and Heels is brought to you by First Coast Honda Dealers. Get gear grinding, asphalt winding NASCAR on 1010XL. This is going to be tight right here. This Sunday at Talladega. Brought to you by the Plumbers and Pipefitters Local Union 234. On your NASCAR station, 1010XL. Tired of dealing with clogged drains? What about those bad smells coming from your pipes? No matter how big or small your commercial or residential project may be, my friends at DuckDuckRooter can handle it. Contact them today for all your plumbing, septic, and air conditioning needs at 904-862-6769. And while I have your attention, DuckDuckRooter is also hiring plumbers. They offer excellent weekly pay, health insurance, paid holidays, 401k, and more. Apply now at DuckDuckRooter.com and they will call you for an interview. Let's fire up the flavor and ignite those appetites. Let's slow down and smell the barbecue. Because all your favorites are smoked for hours and ready for eating when you are. From our famous ribs to slow smoked pork. Enjoy some perfection by the plateful, safely in our dining room or in the comfort of your home. With curbside pickup, drive through and delivery. Sonny's Barbecue, local pit masters since 68. Make sure your roof is ready for the next Florida storm by scheduling a complimentary roof inspection with Universal Roof and Contract. And right now, get $200 off your roof repair and $500 off a roof replacement, plus no interest for one year. This offer expires April 30th and restrictions apply. Ensure peace of mind before the next storm hits with Universal Roof and Contracting. License number CCC057165, CBC1258484. Universal Roof. Are you 18 years or older, just got married, just got divorced, or have children? Listen up. Have you done your last will and estate planning? You have questions, call Matt Hinson with the Hinson Law Firm. Reach him at 527-1700, offices Jacksonville, Florida. And don't let the state decide your fate. It's Taylor Dahl from Helmets and Heels. You know, I've got to tell you about an amazing experience I had recently. I'm moving, which most of you know, can be a very stressful time. I had to get my carpets cleaned, so of course, I called up Zero Res. And let me tell you, they did not disappoint. Zero Res came in and worked their magic, leaving my carpets looking brand new. If you want impeccable service and a great deal, it saved me time, made my move a bit easier, and was less than if I took that apartment cleaning fee. Zero Res, spelled backward or forwards, is the right way to clean. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free from credit cards, car loans, and personal loans. Hey, Prosser here. Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make it happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards. Get some money for a home improvement. 
Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508. 904-999-1508 or go to LoanPronto.com. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. This is Frank Franzi. Join Dan Hickett and me for All Things Gators, our podcast presented by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists with new episodes every Monday. Subscribe and listen by searching for 1010XL Florida Gators Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or tune in. Jumbo Shrimp Baseball presented by FIS with tickets starting at just five bucks is back at One to One Financial Ballpark this weekend weekend. Don't miss Coors Light Thirsty Thursday, Fireworks Friday and Saturday, and Military Appreciation on Sunday Family Fun Day. Tickets start at just five bucks. Log on to jackshrimp.com. Jumbo Shrimp Baseball, affordable, family, fun. At the First Coast YMCA, you'll find much more than just a gym. We offer many ways to help you be active, reach weight loss goals, and find your inner strength while you connect with your community. Family memberships at the Y include unlimited group exercise classes, child care while you work out, and youth sports participation. It's easy to join the Y and affordable for all. Plus, the Y is a great place to meet a new circle of friends. Visit the Y near you or online at fcymca.org. Hidden Hills Golf Club invites you to come out and experience one of the most beautiful and unique golf courses in North Florida. Affordable golf, friendly service, and great times in the Hills Grill after play. Book your tee time, hiddenhillsgc.com. Brian and Angela Wall here with Window World. By now, everyone has heard about saving money on their energy bills. There are all sorts of things you can do to cut energy costs, but most people don't think about their windows. But Window World knows that the biggest energy loss in almost every home is the windows. There is more energy loss from old builder grade windows than just about anything else in your home. You can upgrade your heating and air, your appliances, that's good too. But before you do all that, upgrade your windows to Window World's energy efficient windows. Window World's windows are easy to clean, energy efficient, and have the best guarantee in the business. Window World's slogan is simply the best for less, and we mean it. You get great American made windows, and you get to keep more of your money when you buy from Window World. Need any more reasons to buy your windows from Window World? Call them today and set up your free in-home estimate or go online to windowworldneflorida.com. Window Window World, World, simply simply the the best best for less. less. Thank you for your business. Window World also offers energy-efficient doors. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Helmets and Heels is brightened by First Coast Lighting and Fans on 1010XL. One segment to go here on Helmets and Heels on 1010.92.5 FM. Before we turn it over to the boys from XL Primetime, Mio, Brian, Taylor, Dahl, RJ Saunders, I, and Lauren Brooks. All right, a couple things to get to before we get out of here, and that would be the NBA play-in tournament that starts tonight. All right, RJ. Lakers or Pelicans, if I'm betting, if I'm a betting woman tonight, who you got? If I'm betting? Yep. Oh, God. I don't know, because there's just there's so much going on with the Lakers. Uh, I'm going to call it. I think they tank this one out. They lose okay. intentionally. Really? And mm. uh, they'll play one more game for the eight spot so that they can face OKC in the first round. So All I have right. New Orleans winning this one. And Mia, you probably have the odds. Uh, I'm really just asking him more or less to pick straight up. Uh, and then the late night game tonight, Warriors Kings. Who you got? I am going to take. Oh my goodness! I'll take uh, I'll take Golden State in this one. Yeah, I'll take I, Golden talk, State. I talked to a couple of uh, our counterparts out in the Bay Area this morning, and uh, the Warriors have definitely RJ been a talking point to say the least. Even overshadowing the Brandon Ayuk, did he request a trade? Did he not request a trade? Storyline out there because mm-hmm. they're not the Warriors of old, and are they old? I think is the biggest question. If you are looking to either get in on the action with this game or simply watch it tonight. Well, Steph Curry's crying this season, so I feel like they're feeling old. RJ of the play-in teams, which Kings, Warriors, Pelicans, Lakers, Bulls, Hawks, Seventy Sixers, Heat. Which one of those, if if they did? is most likely to make a run, do you feel? Well, they've been making a run the last few years. That team down there in South Florida. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy Butler's already 
calling his shot, saying that nobody wants to face us in a seven-game series to begin with. So um, they, I, I feel like that's the team that could make the run. Philly is interesting right. uh, to me because Embiid is back. Um, and if Embiid and Maxi are able to uh, rekindle some of that fire they had early on in the regular season, let's just say they come in as the eighth seed and they're playing Boston in the first round, could be scary there. I don't know if I just give Boston the runaway with that. So, uh, yeah, the two teams in the West, you know, I think the Lakers would probably say we'll take our chances against Oklahoma City and we'll use our our, our veteran know-how to win a seven-game series there. But a team that could make a legitimate run – is a team that's been doing it for the last few years in Miami. It's because they have culture. We talk so much the Jags need a culture. What is their culture? We know what Miami's culture is. There's no question about that on the basketball mm-hmm. hardwood. Um, by the way, lines from my bookie for tonight's two play-in mm-hmm. games in the Western Conference. The New Orleans Pelicans, one-and-a-half point favorites over the Los Angeles Lakers and the Golden State Warriors, indeed, are two-point favorites over the Sacramento Kings, who, RJ, at, at, at last look for those casual NBA fans who may have not been following as diligently since the postseason a year ago. The Kings, I don't want to say they were the darling, the the Jaguars, if you may, of the NBA postseason last year, but they didn't have to play in the play-in tournament last year, correct me if I'm wrong, and I think the expectation was that they'd pick up right where they lo- where they left off and contend for a 1, 2, or 3 seed and not be finding themselves here just trying to make the dance. In the words of Shaquille O'Neal, Sacramento will never be the capital of California Los Angeles will be the capital of California. Can you dig it? Uh, Yeah, no, this was a team I thought, you know, Mike Brown had figured out the secret sauce. I mean, you know, he's kind of been around the league since uh, he and LeBron parted ways early on in LeBron James's career, and he found himself as an assistant coach on Steve Kerr's staff. Had this resurgence year one um, coaching-wise with a young Sacramento team. Uh, Sabonis and Fox I really like as a one-two punch. Um, I just think probably the expectations for them um, making that next step probably just a little bit too early. Um, but I do think this is a team that's going to be scrappy. I'm not just going to give this game to Golden State. I, I do feel that Sacramento is going to look across the way and see a Golden State team and say this team is beatable and that if we are to face, whether that be, well, if we win our first round series, if we face OKC, defeat the Lakers and and the second play-in game and face OKC in the first round, we have a chance to beat OKC. So um, although they've had a a step back this year, um, I do think that they're a team that is still confident in their abilities. There you have it. I will be watching tonight at least the first game. The second game doesn't tip off till 10 uh, (laughs) o'clock. That is very late for the East Coast people. But, yeah, it's for the West Coast fans. Uh, The Jumbo Shrimp currently lead the Norfolk Tides 3 to nothing. And there was a miraculous play that may end up being on SportsCenter by uh, one of the infielders for the Jumbo Shrimp. So be paying attention to that. Actually, outfielder, he came up that far to uh, to save a grand sl- – well, it wouldn't have been a grand slam, but the bases were loaded for Norfolk. Uh, but it could, if it had dropped, they certainly would have scored runs. So 3 nothing for the Jumbo Shrimp. And the last thing I'll leave you with today, ladies and RJ, Anton Harrison, Jaguars right tackle, tweeted this out this morning. I legit get mad when I see people put ketchup – and or hot sauce in eggs. I think we need yeah. to have Anton. Like, we need to get a video series. <laughs> His food a, a radio, A yes, radio I segment. I, like, even if we have him call in, like, once a week, and it's just, like, he's on for five minutes, and he just, like, I love it. takes takes callers upset about his yeah, food I'm with takes. him. I'm, well, I'm oh, with I him on that first I love eggs and hot half. sauce. Come on yeah, now. I, I, like, I don't like eggs with ketchup. I love eggs with hot yeah. sauce. Uh, so, yeah. He also said he put sugar in his grits, and that was just weird to me. That's super weird to me. <laughs> that's Butter and North salt. Thing. Those are yeah. the two things that go in grits. All right, that's a wrap for us. Uh, thank you to our guests from today. These heels are made for tuck, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. For me, O'Brien, for Taylor Dahl, for RJ Saunders, I'm Lauren Brooks. Don't go anywhere. XL Primetime comes up next. These boots are gonna walk all over.